Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm here with Republic of Ireland legendary goalkeeper David Ford. And we're here to basically, you've retired recently, so we're here in the Aviva Stadium to celebrate your career a bit. So if you wouldn't mind kind of elaborate, you, you started your pro career at Galway. How did that come about? And then we'll talk kind of through your career as a whole. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's great to be back at the Aviva Stadium once again, like, you know, to be looking around and pitch manicured and looking beautiful. and. You know, it's such a, a special ground to me, and I've had some, you know, truly phenomenal nights here. And when I just think of back at some of the fans up in the stands there, and the fields of Athenry, and being a being a proud Irish man, and being a proud Galway man, and, and you know, that's that's my tribe there, my people. And to hear the fields of Athenry ringing around the stadium has been, you know, it's purely magical. You know, hairs and back of me next stuff. So, yeah, it was it, it all came about when um, you know I always had that drive and ambition. And I'd taken a scenic route around getting across to the UK. So um, all my friends, they were all going all across, you know, the, the the stereotypical route of, you know, 15, 16 years of age, clubs coming up and stuff. But I was always a bit too small, a bit too heavy. And, small? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, small. 15, 16, yeah. you, you yeah, took exactly. a bit of a yeah, 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 yeah. It was like something out of the big movie, but, you know. <laughs> and... Um, so then, as it turned out, you know, Donna Reardon was a Go United manager, and uh, he was he was looking for young local talent and stuff to come in and, you know, build build that reputation and bring that sense of pride back to Go United. And he managed to track me down, or someone scouted me and picked me up, and uh, you know, that's that's where it began. I had two two great seasons at Galway. Yeah, and then from then you moved to the uh, Welsh team, Barry Town. Yeah, Barry Town, the League of Wales. Yeah. How did that move come about? Because it's not really that heard of. If you've gone, I suppose, yeah, to Wales. Yeah, that's it? yeah. It's very true. You know, it was. Um, it, it came about through. Uh, I was playing with Scott Morgan. He came and played with. Uh, I played the two seasons with Scott, and we became quite close and friendly. And his dad was um, Harry Redknapp's chief scout at uh, West Ham at the time. Well, so he, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, all Harry. So. Um, he came down to he came to Galway to watch a game one Friday night up in Terryland. It was a wet, windy night. I think we were playing Finn Harps or something. And he turned around to his son and he said, "Geez, I quite like quite like David. Like you know, he's a he's a tasty keeper. He's got something, you know." So then Scott had just signed for Barry Town uh, the following summer. They were looking for a goalkeeper. Obviously, Peter Nicholas was the manager, the ex ex Chelsea and Arsenal player and, and Welsh captain. And he, Stuart, being Welch and had that connection, he says, right, I have a keeper in the west of Ireland that's, that's ambitious and wants to get ahead and wants to crack on with his career and stuff. So it was a no-brainer for me at the time, you know. I just thought, you know, the way he explained it to me was that, you know, it's, it's great playing football in the west of Ireland and playing the League of Ireland, but you're that step closer to England and accessibility for scouts and stuff. So it turned out to be uh, one of my uh, better moves. There wasn't many, but it was one of the better ones. Yeah, so is it, after Barry didn't talk to us a little bit about your, your West Ham time. Yeah, West Ham, I ended up getting, uh, I think it was 100k in the end that I ended up going to uh, West Ham from Barry Town. And Not bad business at all. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, pretty shrewd at the time, you know. So I had three phenomenal seasons at, at West Ham. What, a, what an amazing club, an amazing football club. And... Uh, I, I, even though I never got to play first team football there, I was in many squads and I got, I was on the bench I think five, six times, something like that for the first team. So that taught me a lot about myself in that. It gave me a lot of time and space actually on my own. You know, I was in my own apartment. I was spending a lot of time with myself and trying to figure out, you know, the, the intricacies and the, the dynamics of what it is to be a high performance athlete. Yeah. What it is, because I came from a, I suppose, a, a, a semi-pro and amateur background and stuff. So to go out to that elite level, go to that level and, and to have that pursuit of excellence and that drive in myself was, was a, a tough challenge for me at the time. I found it very difficult in terms of, in terms of my physicality, my diet, et cetera, et cetera in terms of uh, my off the field extracurricular activities, you could call them. And, um, you know, just, just in terms of my own um, emotional and uh, mental well-being and stuff at the time. Like, so it was such a, a, a huge time for me. And uh, it's only now that I've had an opportunity just, you know, writing my book and stuff. And it's been such a cathartic experience that, that I've managed to undercover 
the layers that's that 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 the learning I actually got from that experience yeah I think was I, invaluable I think a lot of people as well they don't they, they just you know see people they go to these clubs and they think that life is perfect and they don't see the the actual day-to-day -day stuff that y y players like yourself like I recently interviewed Keith Fahey and he went into detail on those types of stuff and he kind of fell off the wagon a little bit as well with as you say extracurricular you know activities and stuff like that and people I don't think people really understand that people are living on their own and you know they have to deal with things as well it's not just a glamorous life of playing with a Premier League club yeah million percent it uh, it comes with a lot and that's why now stepping into this work that I'm doing currently now around coaching mentoring and personal development I started to understand the empowerment of unconditional support and um, when you get someone with you that can relay not only um, about your profession and about your career, but ultimately understanding self, getting to understand in your nature of who you actually are and how, whether I was a footballer, whether I was a janitor, whether I was a builder, or whatever, whatever profession, accountant or banker, it didn't actually really matter. It was about I was being seen and being supported unconditionally from that space and from, from who I am. Even though you know we, we earn great money and we do earn good money and stuff like that, but there was a side of there was a sense of um, you know identification with the role and the what we actually do as footballers, and um, you know you lose that sense of your own individuality and that of uh, a part of yourself is so um, ruthless and it's so unforgiving. There's no mercy in that, in that, in that pursuit for excellence, in that sense of. I want to be such a high achiever, I want to keep pushing myself, I want to get to the best, I want to play you know, professional football, I want to play for Ireland. And you know, I was ruthless to a lot of people around me in pursuit of that, but most of all I was like borderline, hashtag self care, like, you know what I mean, or self, self harm, like you know, that I didn't actually um, give myself that, 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 um, that care that was needed for that time, I was so harsh on myself. Yeah. Um it's interesting to hear you say that, and kind of it's, it's good to hear that you're you're still pro productive and proactive in, in doing stuff. You your time, I suppose, at West Ham led you back to Ireland, and how did that kind of come about? Um, that came about uh, purely out of disillusionment and, and pure sense of disappointment. I came out of the training ground, I remember it well, bagging me back, and um, I had a phone call from a manager in the UK asking me to stay, and I, I just felt I just needed to come home. I needed that sense of um, that sense of nurturing, that sense of mothering, and uh, I just felt that bit fragile. So I just felt, you know, the best place for me now is to is to well, go home what, what and reboot and stuff. Um, 24, oh, okay. 24, so yeah, 24, 25, yeah, still relatively young. Um, but at that time, you actually think that you know you're an absolute man, and that you know your career is passing you by, and you don't have years left. Like you know, if I was to look back and think, geez, I've nearly 16 years left in my career. On top of that, but you don't see that at the time, you know, you're yeah. so caught up in that spin of the, the now and what's happening currently. Um, so, yeah, I, I decided to, 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 to come back to Ireland, and um, that was, you know, the best decision for me at the time, and I, I do feel it was, you know. So, when I came back, I was, you know, probably going to pack in football altogether and stuff, but luckily um, I didn't, and I'm sitting with you here today off the back of making. 24 caps from my country where there was one stage I didn't even think I'd get one yeah that's not amazing. one I did not think I'd get one really yeah yeah and chasing that like you know I, it, there was just years there where I was so hungry for it I was so hunting it you know and then I actually got to one stage and I remember coming in one Monday morning I spoke to my goalkeeping coach Tony Burns at Millwall and I said you know I think I think that's passed me by and it wasn't until I actually accepted that myself and I'd actually let it go that it actually started to manifest and unfold. I wasn't so uptight in it anymore. I wasn't so uh, gripping and possessed by it and holding onto it anymore that my, my form changed and all of a sudden my, my ability to, you know, to perform at higher levels certainly started to, uh, start, started to emerge. And then, you know, all of a sudden, 31 years of age, I, I get a phone call and Alan Kelly rings me on the other end of the phone and he says, David, he said, you know, on behalf of Giovanni Trapattoni, Marco Tardelli and myself, we've been invited over to the European qualifier and to the Irish squad. And I was, we were just after playing a game for uh, Burnley, uh, against Burnley, sorry, up at yeah. Turfmore. 
and we beat them 3-0, kept another clean sheet and I think it was up around 18, 19 clean sheets that season and uh, the form like was Randolph really good. Season. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah, he's, he's, he's done fantastic, Darren's such a, such a gentleman and a fantastic goalkeeper. But going back to... Your clean sheet? Yeah, yeah, when we, we won that game, um, we are driving over the M62, I think it is, up over the moors and in Lancashire and stuff and I get the phone call and just the tears start to roll in from my eyes and stuff like you know the sense of pride and what it meant to me personally that I finally got to achieve that and what it meant to, to my family you know and it was you know it's it's such a huge experience you know what it meant to my, my mother and my father and, and God bless my dad you know he passed away three months ago so to be back here sitting here today you know it's 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 coming like you know to the end of that cycle and it's just honoring that space of of where I've come from and where my family and uh, thanks to my, my father and my mother. Yeah, and just because we're here in the Aviva and just going to wrap it up um, quickly because we're under pressure for time. Um, what is your, your biggest favourite moment, I suppose, from the Aviva playing with Ireland? Yeah, favourite moment from the Aviva. Um, geez, that's a great question. Um, for me, it probably was when we actually beat um, when we beat Estonia in the uh, what you call it the playoffs. qualifiers in the playoffs yeah. final yeah yeah because one was um, I was in a couple of the squads building up towards that and I'd got injured the week before I pulled a calf muscle um, I'd come over and met with the squad in Dublin on the Sunday Dr Alan Byrne thank God who was an amazing amazing team doctor uh, brought me down and got me a scan and they said oh unfortunately you pulled your quad, quad and stuff so that took me out of the game but you know I, I ended up going back and I said look can't make it I ended up going back to my club for treatment and you know watching that game unfold on, on TV at home and jumping around and I think there was cups of teas and everything else flying around the sitting room with, with my wife and family and stuff and, and just delighted that we'd won 4-0 and brought the game back here but oh, one of my best memories in, in my whole experience was the the gesture that Giovanni Trapattoni showed was that he got Mary O'Brien the chief of operations to ring me immediately after that game to invite me back over during the week to come and, and, and enjoy the game and enjoy the celebrations and stuff so I thought what a man what a what a beautiful gesture you know that's to 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 be taken out of it under you know unfortunate circumstances but then to be included back into the team, into the squad, into the celebrations of what a fantastic night that I think it was, I can't even remember how many years it was since we qualified yeah. for a European Championship. So that was a really special event for me, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll always be grateful for, for Giovanni Trapattoni for, you know, bestowing the, the Irish jersey upon yeah. my shoulders. I think that it shows the class of the man too. I think he got a little bit, bit of a bad rap towards the end of his Rain, but to get us to the Euros and so on, what an incredible achievement that was at the time. A million percent. Yeah, now just uh, lastly then, just you've, you've recently retired, you mentioned you have a book coming out and you also mentioned being a, a coach and stuff like that, so what's the next chapter in your career, um, you would say anyway, and when's the book out, so if you want to give it a plug, plug away there. Yeah, yeah, plug away, yeah, well, I'm just, to be honest, since I announced my retirement and since we did the video, um, uh, Great video, by the way, which we shared on. Yeah, that yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, we, we, I've been just truly, truly, you know, blown away by the support and the well wishers, and you know what the Irish people have actually given me and stuff. I've, you know, as I said, I've always been a pro Goa man, really proud Irish man, and that sense of pride has always stayed in my heart. And it was just a way that, you know, that I could show that part of myself, what another part of me, and what it actually meant to me, and. You know what my family my friends my supporters fans teachers mentors that what they've given me was a was part of you know a creative side of myself that i wanted to explore so now yeah we're into we're into this side of this side of my career now and it's all based along coaching mentoring and, and personal development and using those skills and that knowledge that have been passed down to me from from some of the best coaches and some of the you know elite performers in the game some of the best managers, some of the best best people in, in football and sports. So I, I thought, how best can I use the, my my skills, what I've actually learned, and my experiential knowledge and stuff, and and to put that back and to to, to create something from that. So 
that's what we've we've decided to do. And um, you know, the the company is called Pathfinder Coaching and Development, and um, you can find it on uh, www.pcd.ie. Well, best of luck with it, David, and uh, thanks for giving me your time here today. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cheers, okay? Thank you, yeah. Absolute gentlemen. Also, it's all on uh, Twitter, Instagram, all the other ones as well. <laughs> this is it. If you like this video, uh, drop a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Huge thanks to David, and uh, we'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching.